Welcome to the Vault here at BRFM. My guest this evening, James Rollingsworth. Hello. Hello. All the way from Bristol. Um, yeah. You've killed your time. We've been waiting here this, this today. Yeah, just by I, destroying your equipment mostly. I found that uh, mandolin on the wall. hasn't been, I think it ever been played before. James picked it up and off the wall, restrung it, and wrote that song in the last two hours. Something like that. Yeah. So I didn't actually write down the exact time, but um. <laughs> very, very versatile. So, uh, like you say, you are from Bristol originally. Um, I'm from the South East actually, originally Horsham, uh, West Sussex, but I've lived in Bristol for about 14 years now. Right, so, um, but so you're a singer, songwriter, guitar player, harmonica, yep. uh, piano? Uh, a bit of piano, yeah. And mandolin, of course. Uh, mandolin today, yeah. Um, and uh, some, some Indian flute as well, a bit of oh, Indian so flute. Should have brought that. I did. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, you're penny whistle, you penny whistle, your flute, yes, and your little bells. Yeah, I usually that just to kind of get people's attention, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm supposed to kind of to start even out the vibrations the of the feng room. Get the feng shui right in the room and things. Huh? Get the feng shui. Feng shui, get, got to get it right. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, right, um, I went to see you last night, of course, down in Lingard. You did indeed. Thank you very much. You swelled the audience Enjoy significantly. Yeah. <laughs> Poor turn out, but a uh, fantastic gig nonetheless. Yeah, thank you very much. Really enjoyed myself. Yeah, lovely room. Great, yeah. Beautiful sound in there. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't fancy a rock band in there, it's going to bounce around a bit. Oh, that's going to be hideous. But uh, yeah, yeah for, for the stuff that we've done. Thanks for the word, Stockton. Rob. <laughs> um, <clears throat> like you say, it, uh, there's all sorts of influences in, in the music, plus your own unique style and take on things. Lots of, um, I thought, Pink Floyd in there, lots of, um, like, prog, like, but say yes. And, yeah, um, yes, they're definitely an influence. Um, and a little bit of Jeff Rotel as well with the folky rock. I suppose, stuff. yeah, that's kind of more by osmosis, I guess. Yeah. Um, and the, probably the hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is stand on one leg and do your food out. That's right, right, yeah, stand on one leg, fall over. <laughs> Jobs are good. And <laughs> but yeah, it was good. And um, I, I didn't know, quite know what to expect. Well, I did, because I did the album, but the, the guy I took with me, he didn't know what to expect. So um, he seen the guitar, the, the acoustic guitar, and he was expecting more or less a folk show. Mm. And then you opened up with that sort of uh, acoustic metal is probably the best uh, term we can use. Yeah, for. I, I just kind of felt like doing something at that particular moment. It was improvised, um, so it was half kind of sound check and half kind of clearing my head, really. Yeah, um, it, it turned it, into it, a kind of a rocky thing. Yeah, yeah I noticed you on, on this album as well, there's a blues, it's somewhat similar with the blues you do as well. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of slide guitar on there, an open G. Um, it's a, an adaption of, uh, I have to look at the track listing. I've, my mind's gone blank. Somebody's. Um, I used some lyrics from uh, from a couple of songs. Um, Leroy Carr. Um, his songs are out in the public domain now. So um, I nicked a few of his lyrics um, yeah, and did them in a, in a Richie Haven style. Um, so uh, sorry, what was that? Oh, the copyright now. Feel fifty years old, is it? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, so um, yeah, I was thinking of doing a whole album of his stuff at, at some point because um, he wrote some great songs. Leroy Carr. Mm. Um, Google him. <laughs> there's all sorts of, like, of different guitar style in the, like um, with the your Andalusian guitar. We saw your Spanish stuff there. Similar, of, I was rendered a bit like um, Spanish Caravan by the Doors. Mm. And when you were some of the looping as well, sounded a bit like Robbie Krieger style in the background. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's certainly that kind of the start, that yeah. kind of dreamy. Mm. Psychedelic kind of vibe, yeah, trancey thing. Which takes us into back into the Pink Floyd influences and things yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, Pink Floyd also, I mean, the first guy I saw doing that kind of stuff with an acoustic guitar was Roy Harper. Mm. Uh, that was about 1991. I didn't realise that you could do that with an acoustic guitar at the time. So um, that set me thinking, and now, what? A lot of people. Quite a few years later, I'm, I'm actually doing it for a living. Yeah, quite so, a lot of people. Thanks to Mr. Bit. Harper. Yeah. Uh, hats off to a uh, hats off to Harper, indeed. Yeah, um, Robert Plant was at my gig the other week. Actually, he didn't come into the the bar I was in, but it was his local. Um, he was just this geezer sitting there with a the pint with his friends. He's in uh, he's in the West Country somewhere. Isn't he? Um, yeah, near Worcester. Uh, so it's yeah, Midlands really. Yeah, because oh, he's, he's a Brummie boy basically. Isn't 
so, so I gather. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine was in. Um, cause he's always in down the border country because a friend of mine was in Monmouth and he, he used to do a lot of work down that way. Mm. And he stood behind him in the, in the post office queue and just dumbstruck didn't know what to do. <laughs> stood behind Robert Plant. <laughs> and, uh, I had to Sweet. look into some of the, uh, the, the, the quotes and um, on your press release. Uh, there's one newspaper, the Wiltshire Ocelot. It's a great name, isn't it? Where, where did that come from? Um, well, where did the Wilshire Ocelot come from? Yeah. I don't know, I guess you'd probably have to ask them, but um, uh, he was just at a gig I played in um, the Prince of Wales in Shrivenham and um, gave me a, a very good write-up, and they've got me back in May playing a Pink Floyd show, uh, which should be fun. Um, I already do a version of Side 1 of Dark Side of the Moon, um, so I'm going to learn Side 2. Um, I've already got most of it off, but I uh, just need to kind of string you, it together. Oh, yeah. you do the... The clear Tory, but the uh, gig in the sky, and you say mm. you, you take your own tape, you do it. Yeah, yeah, I sing it um, in my own way. Um, I don't hit the same high notes as no, she does, but, a but of um, yeah, because <laughs> I can I can do a bit of full falsetto in there, but um, generally it's kind of normal voice range, and I'm just um, uh, blaring it out. Really, what's yeah. the word? Belting, yeah. belting it out. I know it was last night as well. But talking about covers, you didn't play any covers last night, but you did slip into it at the start of one song. Um, ACDC back in black so oh, yeah, yeah, I do. tend to slip the odd um, yeah I do just stick the occasional cover in there which is yeah. good as well because I think I don't like to see bands just be covers all night because you can just put the records on if you want to do that mm. but uh, if there's a band that you might not you not know not, not sure, sure of you can go and um, if they play something you know it sort of brings you back in if you're perhaps if you yeah it kind of gives you a sense of perspective yeah. really on where they're coming out because you hear a familiar song and then you hear their take on it and you think oh right now you know how to kind of listen to exactly that seems to work in theory anyway and, and in theory, practice you had to uh, adjust your set last because you don't do a set a song this a set this right you do a song map yeah it's um it's basically I mean I could go and grab it for you now if you like. Um, it's a bit difficult to see on there. Yeah, yeah. It'll take it's, ten seconds, it's, do you want to, or shall I? Uh, you need to unclip it from the sides there. So basically, it's arranged. Um, all the songs arranged in key order. So if I'm improvising, oh, he's just destroying everything as much as I was earlier. Um, it's a payback. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's a bit like a flow. Uh, so you got all the. If you hold that side. This is the circle of fifths, which is a useful um, way of arranging the songs. And uh, all my songs are arranged by key. So if I'm improvising in a key, I can look over here and say, oh, I haven't played that yet. And then I'll segue into that. Um, and it also, sort of, there's various colored dots which remind me of the red ones are ones that people have asked for a lot. <laughs> so those are the requests that I often get. So those ones that go down, go down well. So if I'm in a spot of bother at a gig, then I'll just play the ones with the red dots on. At least that's the th that's how it used to be. Um, and I'm ready for the next version now, which is going to be a bit bigger, have a few more songs on it, Moving. and uh, some other morning. background. Huh? you got one more from this morning? Yeah, exactly. Start to build up after a while. So, um, yeah, that's what I use. And I, I used it a bit last night, but mostly I just uh, I just followed my Instinct, yeah. whim. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, um, so, so we say a sparse crowd, but... Um, those who was there really enjoyed it. They made a lot of noise we for did. the number of people yeah. that, there was, that, that was there. So, yeah, it was a quality, not quantity. So I think what we'll do, we'll have a track, have a listen to uh, the James Orangsworth experience, come back and then we can ta ask a little bit more about where people can obtain all this, the music, hmm. where they can come and see you, a little bit about the uh, production, your artwork, which should be behind us, and, of course, um, where they can come and see you, and j -Bo as well, or j -Bo. Jebo. Jebo. Yeah. So let's have a track of you then, James. Okay, okay. And then uh, come back. So what are we going to hope that with? I noticed you've got a track called Swansea. I have, indeed. I'm not sure if I feel to um, remember it, actually, but uh, I could give it a go. Is there any particular reason why we've got a, somebody from the South West living in Bristol I, yeah, I used to I used to live in Swansea. I went to university there, oh. um, and uh, yeah, I lived there for four years, stayed on, on another year, and uh, ended, up, ended up writing a tune. It's uh, quite a sparse song. I'm going to play a thing called Sooner or Later, which uh, a friend of mine um, from Catalonia has uh, 
translated into Catalan. Chapter one and two. Xavier Panades. Xavier Panades. He's a Catalan. Hey man. 